Hello everybody and welcome back. Today I'm going to be filming with products I've hit pan on and I actually got this video idea from you guys. I've seen requests to see something like this in my comments and in my DMs and I thought it was such a fun way to compile the products I have such an appreciation for in one video. So before we get into it, I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't already and let's get started. So for my foundation, I'm going to be using my Patrick Ta Duo here. I'm going to use the shade Light 2 and I love this foundation. I know people either love it or hate it. I'm on the love it side and I think I hit pan on this so fast because I often use this when I'm filming cheek swatches, like for my tournament videos or for like roundup videos. I reach for this whenever I need to demo products so I think that's why I hit pan on it so fast but I reach for this foundation for those cases because it collaborates well with so many different products and it has a great amount of coverage but it feels so nice and lightweight on my skin and it's so easy and quick to apply. It's very hassle-free. Um, I also traveled with this a few times and it's always the foundation I wear the most on vacation. I feel like it wears really well with different climates, but overall I love how everything layers on top of this so easily and it looks flawless and glowy and just, I honestly can't say enough good things about this duo. Um, the powder side is incredible as well. It's super, super, blurring. I am just going to be using the foundation side today though because I have other foundations I've hit pan on. So I'm going to apply this with my BK Beauty 101 brush and you can just see its finish here. It's so nice. I feel like it's quite softening as well. I do have a few breakouts happening right now and I feel like it just really helps to mask them out without drawing attention to them, which is very impressive for a cream formulation. Sometimes they can pick up on texture a little bit more than say a liquid would. I told you, I can't say enough good things. I don't have a product that I've hit pan on in every category. So in those instances, I picked products I've either repurchased a few times or the product that is the most well-loved. So for concealer, I went with the Maybelline New York Instant Age Rewind Eraser. It's one concealer I always have on hand. It's such a nice, lightweight, easy wearing concealer. It's so fun to apply. I personally love the little sponge tip. I think it feels nice. <laughs> and I'm using the shade 120. And today I'm going to mix in a little bit of the shade 160, which is the pink one, just for some extra brightening effects. I feel like this is an easy concealer to love because of its thin consistency, but it's high coverage. And I feel like it doesn't enhance texture at all. It just is the perfect everyday kind of concealer. And that's why it's been such a staple of mine for years. I have three powders I've hit pan on and I was wondering why I have so many. And I figured it was because I'm very picky when it comes to setting powders and the ones that I love, I often rotate through them. So. I guess it makes sense. The first one being the LYS Triple Fix Setting Powder. I use the shade Resilience. I love this one. It's very blurring and softening and it lasts really well on my oilier complexion. Another one that I find to be very similar to this one is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish, which is the second one I've hit pan on. These are very similar in my opinion. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury one though is a bit more blurring, but the LYS one lasts a lot longer on my skin. I feel like it sets my makeup a little bit deeper in a way. And the last setting powder that I've hit pan on is the e.l.f. Prime and Stay powder, of course. I've gone through a few of these already. These are incredible, another great blurring option. Honestly, all three of these are kind of similar. I'm going to try to incorporate all three. So the first one I'm taking is the e.l.f. one for under my eyes. So you can see here, this is the set side and the unset side. You can see how softening and nice and brightening it is under my eye. And I'm using this BK Beauty 110 brush to pack this under my eye. And now I'm going to set my forehead using the LYS, and then I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury one as kind of a finishing powder, but let's just mattify my forehead for the time being. I've also been taking it through my eyebrows because I feel like the skin underneath of my eyebrows have been getting really oily. I don't know why, but by setting it, it just helps to grip on my eyebrow products. I have two bronzing products to go in with, the first one being the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. I'm going to be using the shade Light Medium. This is my favorite shade. Uh, and the other product is the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Instant Warmth Bronzer in the shade Inda Sun. So I'm first going in with the Makeup by Mario with this 125 face brush from Fenty Beauty. You've heard me rave about this product for what, like a year now? 
so I'm not even going to, but this is one of the best cream bronzers. I can apply it in the dark with full confidence and I know it would look good. You just truly can't go wrong with it. While I'm bronzing my face, I've seen a lot of people wanting me to do like a project pan and I've tried to do them in the past, but I always found that they snatched up all of my creativity. I don't know why, I feel like maybe it makes me feel like I've been put into a box and then I start feeling bad for the other products in my drawer. I don't know, it just does not work for me in my brain. I know it's very helpful for a lot of people in decision making. It cuts having to really think about what products you're going to go in with every day. And I also really enjoy how it promotes to use and love and appreciate what you already have in your collection but unfortunately it just it does not work for me <laughs> but I adore following along other people's project pans I think it's very satisfying so I don't know how these two products are going to layer on top of one another usually I just go in with this and I'm good like it adds the perfect amount Ew, the mirror in here is nasty but we'll see we'll see what happens this is one of my favorite bronzers to go in with in the winter time because it kind of has a contoury aspect to it so it just adds the perfect amount of definition and I think I'm just going to add it to my cheekbones I think this is the only place I want to add a little bit more definition so far it's layering pretty good actually let's just have fun and go all out Now let's dive into the two blushes. So the first one here is the Rose Ink Cream Blush in the shade Fox Glove, of course. This is one of my top favorite blushes, although it's kind of been getting neglected just because ever since I dyed my hair red, I feel like this tone doesn't really flatter my skin anymore. The red really pulls the orangey tones out of this blush, which I've been kind of staying away from orange tones. I've been more into the pinks and peaches and such, um, but maybe I'll give it a try. But the other blush I have here is the Care Weiss blush in I believe the shade Joyful. I believe it's Joyful. But now that I'm looking at this, these look identical. I'm gonna swatch them. So this one is the Care Weiss, which is a more matte cream formula. And this one here is Rose Ink, which has a little bit more of a luminous glow. It does have a fine pearl running through it. I'm going to go with Rose Ink simply because I feel bad for it now. <laughs> okay, let's do it. And I'm using my e.l.f. Cosmetics Complexion Duo Brush. What am I talking about? This color is perfection. Because that is so nice. It doesn't look too orangey. I'm so full of it, you guys. Sometimes I make things up in my head. I feel like I need to say sorry to this. I'm so sorry. Honestly, it looks like such a perfect summery blush. It looks so warm. Oh, I just love what it did to my complexion today. What have I been doing? I'm starting to feel very scatterbrained. I saw the Mario movie probably like a week ago now and the Peaches song has been stuck in my head nonstop. I keep humming it. It's all that I'm thinking about. It's got to the point where it's really annoying me. <laughs> um, but now let's go in with a highlighter. I'm surprised I haven't hit pan on. This is the Ilia Decades Daylight Highlighting Powder. You can see the imprint of the pan in there, but I, I'm, I'm really surprised. I wonder how much I have left to go. It doesn't look like that much. I'm tempted to like stick my nail in there to see, but I don't want to crack it. I was kind of hoping it was going to reveal pan in today's video, but it's, it's just not. This has been one of my top favorite highlighters for years now, probably coming up to three years. I don't know. I don't know when this highlighter launched, but ever since then, it's been one that's always been on heavy rotation. I totally picked up the wrong brush. That was a BK Beauty 113, but I meant to grab this one from Moda, the Pro Glow. <laughs> I was like, this feels very wrong. I'm not sure if I'm liking the way this is looking on my skin today. It's looking dry and cakey. <laughs> it's like adding a layer. You know, it could potentially be expired. Potentially, but I'm not getting rid of it. I'm too attached to it, okay? <laughs> but yeah, I'm not, I'm not very loving that at the moment. But hopefully it will mesh into my skin here. Before I do my brows, I'm going to set the center of my cheeks here with the Charlotte Tilbury powder. I don't think this highlighter is going to sink in really, so I think I'm going to incorporate a setting spray, but I recently finished one of these. This is the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. One of the best for longevity, and it really helps to mesh all of those layers of products together. <laughs> Two layers for good luck. I forgot to introduce the brow intermission before I did my brows and prime my lids, so here it is. Mm -hmm. 
Now moving on to eyeshadow, I've hit pan on this shade in the Melt Neutral Stack, which unfortunately you can't get anymore, but this is such a cute little product and it's so handy. Um, you just get these perfectly beautiful neutral shadows that are so easy to work with. But another palette I'm very close to hitting pan on is the Charlotte Tilbury the Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. I thought I had, but I'm just very, very close to it with this one shade. This is my most used eyeshadow palette. I just love it to bits. I reach for it at least like four times a week. <laughs> but today I'm going to use this little Melt Cosmetic stack. I don't know what I want to do yet because I also have these eyeliners, which look how cute these are. I would consider this hitting pan on an eyeliner pencil. So I have the Permagel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil from Pat McGrath in the shade Extreme Black, which is just like their beautiful black gel liner, and this Makeup by Mario Perfect Brown Eyeliner, which I had a huge obsession for back in 2020 and 2021, but my love for them completely fell off. I find these to be a little hard to work with nowadays, especially since I found some really awesome creamy alternatives. Uh, I find these a little dry and tuggy to work with. <laughs> Look how cute that is though. It only says by Mario now. I'm going to tight line my upper lashes with this just so I can darken up my lash line. This is my favorite step. And by favorite, I meant least favorite because it tickles so bad. I'll gaslight myself into thinking it's my favorite though. I love this. Oh my God, I love how much it makes my eyes water. Although I hate that step, it makes such a pretty difference. I feel like that looks so nice. <laughs> I feel like I should do that more. Now let's incorporate this little, little thing. This little chode. Sorry. <laughs> I can't do. Oh my God, this feels drier than the desert. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do what I wanted to do there. So I'm just going to do a little mini wing. I'm going to take this shade first, which is like a nice cork shade. Beaches, beach, beach, beach. This used to be my go-to shadow to just start off any eyeshadow look because it's a perfect neutral contoury color. It just is the perfect starting point to any eye look. I'm thinking of doing a little mini halo or something. So I'm going to take some of that color and press it into my inner corner here. And I'm going to put a darker one on the outer corner. So I'm just going to open up to this medium brown, taking a little bit of that on that same brush, which is the A504 from BK Beauty. And I'm going to press that into my inner corner first. Now I'm taking a more opaque amount of that, putting it on my outer corner. I'm going to deepen it up now. I'm taking an angled brush and I'm taking the darkest shade from the stack. And I'm going to press that along the eyeliner we laid down. And I might blow this out a little bit more. What if we pressed? It's kind of cool, kind of cool, kind of cool. And I'm taking that same brush with the same shadow and I'm going to darken the inner corner. Now I'm going to incorporate the other two eyeshadow colors that I went in with, I'm taking that medium shade and I'm going over those little details here. Then I really wiped off this brush and I'm taking that first shade here and I'm going to kind of contour my eye bag here. I'm going to take the brown Makeup by Mario liner and shove it into my waterline, leaving that part open. I know this isn't a product um, I'm hitting pan on or hitting the nub on, but I feel like this would be such a nice addition. Cool. But before that dries, I'm just going to take a nice brush opposed to a mean one, and I'm going to help blend that. This isn't anything I was thinking of creating, but it's turning out really cool. Now I'm taking this nice cream shadow shade to set and brighten the inner part right here. Let's take it from brow bone down. And I'm going to take the shimmer from this stack and put it in my inner corner. Whoa, that's a lot. I have major regrets on doing that. I might remove that. <laughs> and it's kind of burning my eyes. Oh no, okay. I'm going to try to remove that with my finger and my sponge. And here are the eyes all finished. I really impressed myself there. I am in love with this shape. 
and I love the highlight in the center. I think this is such an interesting and sexy eye look. And I did add mascara off camera and I decided to use my Lancome Lashy Dull just for like a nice fluffy easy lash. But now for my lips, I'm going to go in with this classic combo. I have another little itty bitty pencil. This is the MAC Oak Lip Liner. It's all rubbed off, I just know that's what this is. And this used to be my favorite lip liner because it's like a nice warm brown contour color. And this lip liner is going to match the eye look perfectly. And I feathered that and I feathered that into my lips just so that the transition is smooth between the clear gloss and the lip liner. And I'm going in with Kosas. Oh no, this is not it. This is shimmery? No, this is right. Why is there sparkles in it? Uh-oh. I must have done something in the past. But this is jellyfish gloss <laughs> from Kosas. By far my most repurchased and gone through lip gloss. I've gone through tubes and tubes and tubes of this over the years. I can see why I've hit pan on all of these products. Look at this makeup, it's so nice. These eyes are so cool. I would love to do this eye shape again, but with colorful shades, I think that would be sick. Like I'm seeing purples or greens be really nice. Um, but here is the finished final makeup. What do you guys think? I got a lot more creative than I was expecting to. I thought I was going to have such a nice little easy neutral eye with the things I had, but I impressed myself. But that is all from me. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I will link everything I can in the description down below. So feel free to check that out and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.